welcome to the service of worship at Central Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you're here with us. We are thankful for you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray to God who loves us, who gathers us together. Loving and gracious God, we ask that you prepare our hearts now to worship you. After receiving so much from you, so much to be thankful for, let our hearts to return to you in gratitude. Let us return to you in gratitude in the good times and also in times of difficulty. We pray this in your holy name. Alleluia. Amen. Thanksgiving in my house, and I love Thanksgiving. I love turkey and pie and stuffing and all the things that go with it. I also love thinking about all the things I'm thankful for. We have these really cool Sunday school takeout kits for every kid who would like one, and part of it is we get to make a Thanksgiving quilt. I am going to draw a picture of me and my cat by the fire because I am really thankful for time next to the cozy fire with my cat. We also have thank you notes so that you can say thank you to someone and all kinds of wonderful things for you to make for your holiday table. If you would like one of these kits and you haven't picked one up yet, just give me an email and I'll make sure that you can have one too. This week is a time to be thankful for God and all of our gifts. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for so many things to be grateful for. Thank you for time with family. Thank you for foods that we love to eat. Thank you for our cats and our dogs, and especially, God, for our friends. We pray this day a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. We are so grateful for the peace that God gives us as a free gift. We are so grateful for all that we have received from God. Today, we encourage you to reach out to someone and to share that good news with them, to share God's peace, to share God's love, to share your gratitude for their friendship. The peace of Christ be with you and also with your spirit. Alleluia. Amen.
blessed to worship here at Central Presbyterian Church in Summit, New Jersey, this uh, Thanksgiving week. Uh, we're glad that you're spending some time with us. We hope that you are connected uh, to us, and we hope that this service will help you to feel connected to God. We plan to continue to broadcast our worship services on HTTV, and you'll also be able to find us on Facebook and on YouTube. And hope that you'll join us uh, on any of those platforms throughout this time, every Sunday at 10. We are, of course, uh, uh, in the thick of our sharing tree here at, at Central Church. That's an annual effort that we make to help area families uh, have a nice Christmas. Uh, this year, our sharing tree is a little different. It's all virtual. Uh, but that means that you can participate from wherever you are. You can go to our website and come down to a blue block that uh, says Sharing Tree. And if you click on there, you can uh, sign up to buy a gift card. Uh, all those gift cards, or most of them, are going to families in the Family Promise program. Now, we need you to sign up to do that fairly soon. Uh, the due date for those gift cards is coming early in December. So if you can go to a website, go to the Sharing Tree a blog, and sign up, uh, clicking on the link uh, to buy a gift card for one of the families and family promise, we'd be most appreciative. Uh, while you're there, you might also want to check out the opportunity to sign up to join uh, Dr. Charity Wicks and myself for a special a study that's going to run the Sundays of Advent, starting next Sunday, November 29th. Uh, that study is based on Handel's beloved oratorio, The Messiah. And we need you to sign up for that study so that we can send you a Zoom link, because the study is going to be virtual, going to be on Zoom, and we uh, invite you to join us. Uh, there's no charge. Um, all you have to do is sign up, and we'll send you the Zoom link, and then you can join us each Sunday during Advent, starting next Sunday uh, at 11 a.m. We also um, hope that you will join us on Sundays in Advent, starting next Sunday, November 29th, at 4.30 p.m., right here at Central Presbyterian Church. You can drive in to the Elm Street parking lot and join us for a very short service when we light the Advent wreath and we also hear some uh, Christmas music on our brand new carol. Uh, everybody's welcome to join us. You can stay in your car even and uh, enjoy that service as we come together through these weeks leading up to Christmas. Uh, beginning uh, on December 1st, I'm uh, starting up again with daily devotionals that will be out there on Facebook Live. They, they will be live at noon, uh, beginning December 1st, every Monday through Thursday. And again, those devotionals are going to be picking up themes that we find in Handel's Messiah and hope that you'll join us for those daily devotionals whenever you can at noon. Monday through Thursday, uh, throughout the period of Advent, starting December 1st. Hope that you'll join us on Facebook Live. And finally, uh, we invite you to pick up an Advent kit here at the church, starting today, after this worship service, until 2 o'clock. The kits contain uh, four Advent candles that you can use at home, along with an Act of Kindness calendar that you can use to enrich your Advent. We hope it will enrich the Advents of all kinds of people around you. You can pick up those kits, as I said, today until 2 o'clock. You can also pick them up next Sunday for, until 2 o'clock or from 4 to 5 next Sunday. And you can pick them up on Friday, December 4th from 10 to 3. Our thanks go out to Linda and Gordon Taylor for their hard work on this project, and we hope that these kits will help you to feel uh, inspired during your Advent preparation. We hope that they will help us to feel uh, connected as brothers and sisters 
Christ. That is our announcements for this morning. We're glad that you're here, and we pray that this service will be a blessing in your life. This morning's scripture lesson is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Many biblical scholars believe that this letter, 1 Thessalonians in the New Testament, is the very first part of the New Testament to be written down, which seems kind of odd. You think the Gospels report on Jesus' life, which predate this, but they actually weren't written until much later. Many scholars believe 1 Thessalonians is the earliest part of the New Testament to actually be written down. And today I'm reading from the end of that letter in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm beginning to read at the 14th verse. This is a standard part of Paul's letters where he signs off his goodbye messages. So really important things that he wants his readers to remember. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 14. Listen and hear God's word. We urge you, beloved, to admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. May God bless to our understanding this reading of God's holy word, and to God's name be glory and praise. Amen. It was an absolutely terrible time to be alive. The Thirty Years' War was raging in Europe. And even though we might not hear much about the Thirty Years' War in Europe, it was a terrible war. It's estimated that between four and eight million people died during that war. In some parts of Europe, 60% of the population died during that war. The city of Islander, was caught up in the middle of that war for 30 years. Refugees crammed the place. And because it was so crowded, disease ran rampant. While armies would pass back and forth through the area and would take whatever meager uh, necessities of life were left for the folks living there in that city, those armies would take them and leave the people of the city of Islander with next to nothing. Martin Rinkert was a Lutheran pastor in the city of Eilenburg during the Thirty Years' War. In fact, by the end of it, he was the only pastor left in that entire city. All of his colleagues had died. And so at certain points of the war, Martin Rinkert was left to do all the pastoral care for the entire city. He would perform 40 funerals a day some days including one day, the funeral for his own wife. Things were terrible and dark. And yet it was in the midst of that terrible time, in the midst of that darkness, that Martin Rinker wrote a prayer that he would pray with his children and that he gave to his flock for them to pray every day when they sat down for their meager dinner. The prayer. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has left us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours And you know, if it seems incredible that anybody would pray a prayer like that during such dark times, then I think that we need to understand the origins of our own national Thanksgiving Day. I know we like to associate our national Thanksgiving Day with uh, the pilgrims and that big party they had uh, to celebrate 
uh, the harvest, tables laden with food. But you know, our National Thanksgiving Day, that is setting aside the fourth Thursday of November for a national day of Thanksgiving, that started with Abraham Lincoln in 1863, in the middle of the Civil War which Lincoln's own Thanksgiving Day proclamation that year acknowledged that the war had been of a magnitude and a severity that was unequal. On that first National Thanksgiving Day in 1863, thousands of people had died. There was no corner of this country that was untouched by the loss and the suffering. And yet, it was in the midst of that darkness, in the midst of that terrible time, that our national day of thanksgiving was created. Give thanks in all circumstances, the Apostle Paul wrote to those Thessalonian Christians. And it's important to know exactly what Paul said. Give thanks in all circumstances, not for all circumstances, because there are definitely circumstances for which no one can be thankful. Those Thessalonian Christians understood that well, because they were, when Paul wrote that letter to them, they were being persecuted by people outside, and worse yet, they were fighting with each other, nasty with each other inside. And so those were circumstances for which they were not thankful. And yet, Paul, even in the midst of that, there is reason to give thanks. If they would just take a look around, they would be able to see the truth. That there were people who loved them. And there was this God who had not abandoned. And so Paul wrote to them, give thanks. Give thanks not for all the bad things, not for the darkness, but give thanks in the middle of the darkness. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, Paul wrote. That is, God knows the only way through dark times, the only way through terrible times is not to wallow in the darkness, and not to complain about all that's bad. But the only way through the dark times is to give thanks for the light. Because no matter how dark it is, there is always light shining. And you know, I hope that this Thanksgiving, you will be able to focus on the light that's shining in your life. I know this Thanksgiving is going to be unlike any Thanksgiving we've ever experienced. We're not going to be able to gather with family and friends like we usually do because of the pandemic that's raging around us. And, you know, there's no ignoring the reality that surrounds us. Because the reality is right in front of our faces. There are people who are getting sick. There are hospitals being overwhelmed with the sickness. And there have been so many of our neighbors and friends who have died. And so I'm not suggesting this Thanksgiving that we try to just ignore the darkness, the reality that surrounds us. I'm not suggesting that at all. But what I am suggesting is that maybe this Thanksgiving is the year not to get everything we want, but maybe this is the Thanksgiving when we really begin to deeply appreciate all that we have. Because 
there is light shining in the darkness. I mean, there are all these brilliant people who have spent most of this past year desperately searching for a vaccine, and we're getting good news these days about that possibility. The possibility that next Thanksgiving will be a whole lot more normal than this one. In the meantime, we know that there are doctors and nurses who continue each day to go above and beyond any call of duty. And they have learned a lot this past year, and they are so much better able to treat COVID-19. And that says nothing of all of those people who just this week will contribute to the food on your Thanksgiving table. The farmers, the truck drivers who brought it to the stores, and then the people in the stores who have stopped the shelf. You know, those folks have been working like that all year long. And they've been able, we've been able to keep our lives moving because of it. Indeed, this Thanksgiving, I'd say that if you have a roof over your head, and if there's food on your table, and if there are people in this world who love you and who care for you, whether or not you can be with them this Thanksgiving, I'd say if those things are true in your life, then you have a whole bunch of light shining in your life. That is, there are countless gifts of love for all of us, including this God who still is ours today. Martin Rinker's prayer. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our lives be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come to God and let us pray. Holy God, we come before you and we express some disappointment. We look forward to these holidays, to Thanksgiving and Christmas, and yet we know that this Thanksgiving, this Christmas, are going to be different from any other we've ever celebrated. And so we're disappointed. And we're sad when we look around us and we see so many expressions of anger, hate, when we see so many who are afraid, when we see so many who are sick, and who are sad, this Thanksgiving is going to be a different one for us. One in which there is darkness around us. And yet, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be able to see the light. For there is also light shining, even in these dark times. And we pray that you would help us to see the light. And we pray that you would help us to be able to point to the light so that others might be able to see it. And give thanks Give thanks even in these circumstances for your goodness, for the good gifts that surround us, for the light that still shines. Lord, hear us, we pray, for we pray this in Jesus' name, as together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanksgiving uh, relates to our offering because any gift that we give is a gift of thanksgiving to the God who gives us so much. And so I invite you during this Thanksgiving holiday to make a gift, to make a gift to us here at Central Church. It's easy to do that. You can go to our website and go down to the Give Plus Giving tab and click on that, follow the instructions and give us a gift online. Or you can mail us a check at 70 Maple Street. Either way, we will really appreciate your gift. I also want to mention to our members that you received a pledge form in the mail. And we've already heard from a number of you and we are so grateful for your pledges for the coming year, for 2021, a real sign of your commitment to our community of faith. If you have not had a chance to return your pledge form, we would appreciate you doing so very, very soon. We'll be following up on those pledge forms after Thanksgiving, and it would be nice to have most of them back uh, so that it would make that work uh, more simple for our elders. We do appreciate your support of Central Church through these difficult times. And we pray that you feel supported by God and by this community of faith. God bless you.
who reigns in highest heaven. We give our praise to God. We give our thanks, especially this week, to the God who still is ours today, who is with us even when times get dark, who is with us and who shines light into darkness. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would overflow with hope. Happy Thanksgiving, and God bless you.